Hey, 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 guys, I'm back. I'm Beth Massey. I'm the product marketing manager for the .NET platform, and I'm with Myra. Yeah, so I'm Myra Winslow, and I'm a senior content developer on the .NET team. Cool. And I'm here to talk about technical docs. OK, so um, right, so documentation. Super yeah. important, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> well, I mean, let's face it. Whether or not you're getting started or you're a seasoned engineer, you're going to need documentation to like write your systems. And, and you are basically in charge of what docs? What are you? Are docs are you in charge of the .NET docs? Yeah. So cool. everything .NET, like .NET Core, .NET Framework, uh, and um, yeah, yeah, it might we switch things around. So I might like might get some new areas to work on. Cool, cool, so uh, great. So let me get your presentation loaded up here. Why don't you get started here? Okay, um, so my session will be talking about docs.microsoft.com and I will, I will cover both in English and then I'll switch to Portuguese in the end, which is my native language. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll do like a few minutes in the end and então, um, para quem está assistindo do Brasil ou de Portugal, eu vou estar tá falando sobre docs. Eu vou fazer primeiro a, a parte da apresentação em inglês e depois eu troco para o português, tá bom? Um, so, here's our agenda for today. We have uh, the journey to open source docs. So, I'll talk a, a quick history on how we got where we are. Um, and then a tour of our, our site, docs.microsoft.com. I'll talk a little bit of how localization works and some of the controls we have for that, and then how you can get involved with our talks and contribute to our open source projects. Cool. All right. So our journey, uh, let's do a quick recap. So our past, we had MSDN and TechNet. We had this segregated um, audiences between like MSDN, it's for developers, TechNet is for IT pros. Um, and then you had this, I put that black hole there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you would send feedback and it would just go to this black hole. It's like there was no interaction with the team. You never knew if people would read your comments or it's like you didn't know what happened to, to that. So that was the past. Um, and in 2014 is when the open source journey started happening really for real at Microsoft. So I, that's kind of the beginning. So we had like Sadia uh, saying Microsoft loves, loves Linux. And then we had the .NET Foundation created. Uh, Roslyn was open source first, first in code plaques. And then I think the next year they migrated to GitHub. Um, and, and so we had a That's what was the snowball effect basically <laughs> that year, right? Because yeah. we had April build, we had the Roslyn open source, yeah. uh, right? That's yeah. when Anders pushed the button. It and was, then yeah. Visual Studio Code. And then 2006, we had .NET Core release. It's like our multi platform, um, you know, development platform. So, uh, and all these cool things started to happen at Microsoft, and you know, history goes on. Um, and at the same time, like our our docs, like we had this closed source uh, environment for .NET Framework, but then the teams that were doing open source projects like ASP.NET Core and .NET Core, the product team started to create the documentation. So that some were using restructured text and Sphinx and others were using Markdown and custom. So there was no standard yeah, to any of this. Like it was all, all over, over the place. place. Yeah, it was all over the place. And like people were pushing to different sites, it was like, Kind it was a mess. A mess. <laughs> so oh, we kind of had a lot of projects at that point, a lot of people, yes. and so we needed a process. Yeah. Okay. And it was like the writing teams, at least for .NET uh, Core, were not so much involved at that point. Like the PMs were kind of driving the documentation at that point. And so we had a new leadership in place, and then we came with the docs vision. So these were kind of our principles that we wanted to go with. So go where the community is. Um, and so people were using GitHub for open source. And so that's where, that's where we chose to be, as to open source our docs. Uh, we wanted to use standard formats and tooling. So GitHub used Markdown as the default kind of extension. So we chose to adapt that to 
for the for the conceptual content, and we used tooling that was available like the Mono, the Mono, <laughs> the MDoc, for Mon to generate Mono API documentation. So it's like trying to reuse and use the standards available and not reinvent the wheel. So you really went out there and looked at what other people were doing yeah. for their open source documentation, yeah. and really took a good look at the, what the community was doing. And then you also adopted those practices and starting to reinvent yeah. the wheel. How? What a novel idea! <laughs> That's awesome. Um, we also wanted to listen, respond, and act on feedback. So we we wanted to have a way for the community to interact with us, and we managed like to manage the feedback that was coming in. So I'll go over more of, on the feedback later. Uh, we also wanted to have automation and validation. So when when you, you submit a, a pull request uh, for us, you'll see builds kicking in and some validations happening. And so, uh, and we're gonna still work on that. Like we wanna improve how our samples are validated. So we can, like when there's a new .NET Core version coming, we can test all of our samples against that new version. So automatically. Automatically, yeah. Wow, so we're, we're that's still, cool. Yeah, you know, we still have more to do on that sense. Wait, so are you telling me then, wait, basically what you're saying is that we write samples, put them in the repos, and then when we have a new version of uh, a build of something, like .NET mm -hmm. Core or something, it would automatically rerun the tests on all of those samples across the whole that's, thing? That's, our that's goal. the idea. That's our goal. So we're going, like we still, we already have some validation for like the current ones, like for, for a couple of folders, but we still don't have a test for all of our snippets, so that's... Wait, so that means like samples will always be up to date? Yes. I, 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 I. <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic. That's really cool. So wh when are we going to get that? Uh, it's coming. So okay, all right, all right. No promises. Yeah, so, for no uh, promises. We have already some CIs running, but okay. yeah, but uh, we, we need to expand our tests. That's awesome. Again, so. That's cool. Uh, okay. And then for, and we also wanted like friendly readable URLs. Who so needs like, that? We don't need friendly readable <laughs> URLs, right? Yeah, like the MSDN, you have like those weird <laughs> characters that, um, Article IDs, yeah, I want to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> Asset now you numbers. Can try to guess it. It's going to be an English name, but you can try to guess it, and you can kind of navigate back that's, and forth. That's, much, that's um, much better. Cool. All right. So, um, Docs is launched. So, in 2006, when um, when we launched on Core, we also launched docs.microsoft.com. Our first pilot was EMS, which is the Enterprise Mobile Mobility Suite, uh, and then .NET Core was the next pilot. Uh, so. Um, and then things started to, to progress, so we launched the .NET API browser. That um, thing is cool, by the way. Yeah, it's and really I'm going to show it later. Cool. Um, and then uh, the interactive tutorials that I think is like one of the best things we have there. Um, and then in 2018, we changed the feedback from LiveFire, which was our previous mechanism, to GitHub issue. So now everything becomes an issue for us. Um, and then the .NET API reference last month was finally redirected from MSDN, so like that was a big deal. Um, and yeah. just this week, we migrated all of the localized API reference for .NET. Sweet. So okay. So cool. Everything is coming. Coming um, together. Yes. Everything is coming open. Yeah. There are a few a few things left to do on migration, but yeah, it was like. Uh, we have a super onboarded engineering team like doing awesome stuff as well. It's like we have lots of things to do, but they keep working with us and getting thing, improved things. Can I ask you a question? So mm -hmm. this is about the old system. I mean, everybody like we all. I don't know if all of you have ever tried to migrate a system forward, right? Mm -hmm. An old system like like MSDN. Like how old are we talking here? These docs. They've they've been like. Oh. We talking twenty years old? Yeah. 15 okay. To 20 so years. I can only imagine the system was built twenty years ago, yeah. right? And trying to get all of that content right yeah. out. And in the open, yeah. How long has it? It's taken. It's still going. It's still going on, yeah. and you started in 2014. Yeah, 2015. 15, wow. And so, how? Like, can you give me like an idea of how, like how many pages are we talking about here? Oh, it's millions. Millions. Like, yeah. Millions. I like okay. just the API reference is like 200,000 pages per version. Wow. So it's like. And then localized versions. Yeah, and too. then you add us. So yeah, it's millions of pages. Wow. And different formats, so it's like trying to. Okay. So it, we find, like, we the community and us, we find issues and we try to, like. To so before it. things were open, how did you even, like, keep up with, like, 
you know, updating these things then. Like, you know, I guess it was really hard, right? So this is like, it was kind of like, had to, you had to do this. Yeah, like, in the, like, I remember once, like, lots of years ago, that we were, like, locked from pushing API reference updates for six months. Oh, my like, God. So our docs were getting pretty crappy. Yes. Yeah, and okay. So, so we uh, had so to do So now this. it's, like, daily publishing, so it's quite oh a different God. world. That's amazing. Um, okay, cool. All right, um, and then I mentioned some of the tooling. So people can use some of the open source tools that we use to generate docs on their own projects as well, which is one question I got on Twitter for this session. So um, so DocFX is a great tool that you can use. It. We use it in our pipeline, uh, and you can get it uh, from that website. And so it generates um, a website based on your source content or DLLs and, and you so based on the triple slash comments. Comments, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. and then your markdown so you can have some conceptual and some API records. So all you folks well. out there, you know, writing APIs, you know, please document them. And look, you don't even have to write the documentation. Yeah, so you can just like have something write it for you. It's automated. There you go. So that's the goal. Right? Write your comments though, people. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, our case is a little bit different. So like ASP.NET Core, for example, it's totally generated from source. .NET is like kind of this different child just because <laughs> we have like .NET Core and .NET Core. So we have all these different implementations that we have to make it combine. Like and .NET Framework yeah. and .NET Core yeah. and Mono and yeah. all the different frameworks. Yeah, and all the flavors. All and the so we have okay. to combine them. Okay. and create one source for them. I see. Um, and then um, and we we note where there are differences in the APIs. But so do the developers, when they're writing these APIs, do they write the, the, the you're talking triple slash comments yeah. here. So they had, did for you have to train them to actually write good comments? Yeah, so that's okay. that's another thing that I want to publish. Uh, we have a contributor guy, and it's something I want to publish out there is like how to write good API docs. Yeah, because typically, I mean, I, 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 I wrote code for a very long time, yeah. and I wasn't very good at writing sentences. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah and there is you know? like, I can see things that don't follow kind of our style. So okay, it's like a, so you go through and kind of like yeah, make so changes to the source code itself? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so that's for cool. ML.NET, uh, ASP.NET Core, they are all auto-generated cool. based on... That's cool. Source. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, and then MDoc is our reflection tool for APIs. So that's another one. That <laughs> Developers we and writing comments isn't an ideal combination. Yeah, yes, so that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... Uh, uh, I think That's we, why we, we have help. this person yeah, here. I think we can help. Yeah, yeah. we can help. We should review. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll give a quick tour now of our site. So let me switch you. And I should have some of the apps all right so so I have here let's see if it's coming up um, no. I'm I saw it again so let's, let's see. see so oh, duplicate. hold let's on try. let's see D yeah, duplicate there you go hey you got it all right you got okay. it all right so here's the home page for docs so now we have one home for technical docs, right? And so it, it's it's for everyone, it's for developers, for IT professionals, and you choose what product you want to work on. So I'll go to our home, .NET. Cool. And then you have uh, everything .NET here, .NET Guide, .NET Core. So .NET Guide is where we put like our cross-platform, so like things that apply to all implementations, like exceptions, event handling, that kind of thing. Um, goes there. Okay. So once you're here, then you're in the in in an article. Uh, you'll have these controls up on top. So you have feedback. Then you have added, um, share. So you can share on social media. You have dark mode that people love it. Ooh! I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I I don't like dark mode personally, but oh, yeah. Because my I have bad eyes. Uh, an article that has more than one language, but I don't know, like maybe in Donut Guide we'll have something for, um, let's see, for events maybe. All right, yeah, so in this one you can switch from C Sharp to VB. So it's something that sometimes people. Oh, are not, okay. Um, you can pick your primary language. Yeah, you cool. Can pick your primary language. Uh, another thing is that 
you can download a PDF. So that will download and open in a new tab. Oh, that so will, like when I go on the airplane, I can yeah. read all about it. And you will, uh, it will download the entire TOC that you're on. So in this case where you were just on events here, you will download all the topics that were in that table of contents um, for you. Fancy. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so feedback. So we said feedback was a big thing. Right. Uh, we have like maybe four ways for you to give feedback. So you can give product feedback. So this will take you to the appropriate um, site depending on the product that you're on. Uh, then content feedback. So that's where if you want to give it, it will go and become um, a GitHub issue for us. Um, then there is um, the site feedback, which is um, you're f like, it's not about the content itself, but maybe you don't like how thing like the site layout is, I or see. you want to give suggestions about how docs contact the webmaster. Yeah, okay. like the docs yeah. at Microsoft.com engineering team and, and things like that. So it's not, not the content. Not related itself. to the words on the and page. And then it's okay. like, oh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be contacted. I don't care if you respond to me or not. Then you can say, is this page helpful or not? and then you can give comments anonymously here. So you'll need a GitHub account to use this one, and then you can give feedback on this one anonymously. So that's an option. So I, I, I like the edit button up at the top there. Yes. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah. what I'll, does that I'll, do? Are you going to show that to us later? Yeah, I'll okay. go when, like, how you can contribute. OK, or I'll go cool. over and show a few things. Cool. Looks like we got, we got a one little comment there. Sweet. Love the download option. I do, too. That's very yeah. fancy. Cool. All right. Awesome. OK, so I, sh I talk about the different types of feedback. And then um, go in the presenter mode, I think you want to full screen it. Oh, there you go. One. You don't need to see two slides at a time there. So let's see. How do I do that? I think you just go there. No. Here oh, you go. I think. Windows P. <laughs> just window. Yeah, just do a Windows P again. There you go. Right? Project. Yeah. Windows P. Okay. So let's there you go. do this again. There. Uh, almost. We almost have it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> this is harder than it looks, people. <laughs> well, and I'm new at presenting too, so it's like. So I think we right. go. I don't know, Javier. What do you think? Mm. Okay. Desktop. Just yeah. Just basically go back to your desktop. Duplicate. Yeah. Duplicate. Duplicate. Is it? Yeah, it is hey. duplicate. So let's try again. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I got lost somehow. All right. We also built some awesome interactive experiences. <laughs> the um, obligatory, where's that button in PowerPoint again moment in any <laughs> presentation. Yes, Sorry. that is exactly what happened. So uh, the <laughs> one, uh, some of the things that we've added. So for Donnet, we have tried Donnet powering some of our, of our of our content. So now that's the cool thing, right? You can actually write C sharp code in the browser, right? Yeah. As you go through this thing. So you can like without installing anything at all, yes. somebody can go and actually write C sharp yeah, so and learn. Show. That's cool. It's like it keeps trying to Yeah. You got a I think it's Windows P Right. Let's try again. Yeah, it keeps yeah. switching from duplicate to extend. Hey, all right. There all we right. go. So numbers. Let's check that out. All right. So you you come here. You have the Donna editor, and you can copy here, paste it, run on the browser. You can learn C sharp like that. It's like oh, I don't want six. I want ten. That's cool. And then it will give you the, the result. And you can you can we we built some basic lessons, and we want to expand on that. Um, so this is a really good teaching tool, yeah. uh, like for even for kids, actually, right? Yeah. They don't have to install anything. They can have any any browser whatsoever. It works. Yeah. And that's awesome. And when you feel ready, we have some lessons about um, about how you can do the same on Visual Studio Code. Cool. As well. Yeah. And so the other thing we did is. is to do the same in some APIs. And we got green light to add it to, to more APIs. So here, daytime is one that we added, this, this interactive experience. And so you can click and run and see how that API works and how the examples work. 
Cool. So, so you got that. Yeah, so, and it, so it leads you through a path, right? You know, it's like step one, two, three, and like a yeah, tutorial so the, style. So the quick starts are like that. Okay. And then this is the API reference. Okay, that's the API. Got yeah, it. So All right. So you have like in the API, you have that experience as well of trying to code. So we're going to start adding more of that um, to other like popular APIs. Then you can try the code here and it's like, um, why is this working? What does it do? I'm not understanding. So you can kind of kind play, of play with it before you yeah. start bringing it into your, yeah. into your so, PC. Cool. And then we have some of the, let's go back. All right, we have the full one. Um, so Azure Cloud Shell, also you can experiment on Azure CLI docs, so you can try commands. You don't have to install anything as well. And then REST try it as well. You can try some of the REST APIs as well. So it's That's like, awesome. Um, so try before you buy. Try before you buy. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also have some ways uh, that you can be notified of updates. Uh, so one, one way would be you can do a search. So let's do a search here in CLI. So everything CLI under .NET, and then you can click here for the RSS feed, and then you will start following that feed. So that's one option. Oh, okay, it's trying to download. I'm not going to download. Um, the other option that I found out about recently is flowmicrosoft.com. Oh. And they have a template for you to add. So let's see. All right. So they have a template for docs where you can e send, send me an email when documentation is updated. So you can create a flow um, to receive um, updates when there's changes to the to Oh, so you're like if you're in. looking at, so you're watching something, you yeah, can have so an email. Watch, you, yeah, yeah, it's like a watch, oh, that's uh, watch cool. thing. So you can enter what URLs are interesting. Like I really want to know when um, this CLI topics are updated or like something they're interested in, you can put it here and it will start notifying you of, of when the content is updated. That's really cool. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, I found out about recently. So Sweet. Uh, that was I, haven't even, I haven't played with Flow. I guess I should. Okay, so you learned something. Yeah, I totally <laughs> learned something. Look at that. All right. The other thing we created is Docs Archive. So, um, on MSDN and TechNet, like we had like one set of documentation per version. So it's like we had done a framework one one and done a framework two zero, etc. And that would compete. So like sometimes you would search and land on like an old version of the topic. Um, and frankly, like they're not used anymore. Like we have now a set that is like kind of comprehensive of versions. We try to be kind of version agnostic. Okay. So, um, so if you're trying to find some of the old documentation, they're all being migrated to this doc, docs.microsoft.com previous version. So let's switch to that. Okay, so you, you can see that the list of products here is growing and, and so we have done it here. Um, so have so OAC, if I wanted an older version of .NET Framework, yeah. okay, yeah. I gotcha. And my port like Silverlight content here, things like that. Gotcha. So, um, so this is coming as well. So it's a huge, like, so it's been a huge effort to to migrate all of these also for out of MSDN. Um, yeah, it sounds like you have a huge amount of docs yeah. over the years. That makes sense. Okay. The localized side of docs.microsoft.com. So I'll show it uh, really quickly, but I'll go more in depth when I'm talking in Portuguese. Um, so, so here is when you have like a, a page uh, in, por in Portuguese or French, whatever language you're looking at. Um, you can enable. You can enable to see what was the um, what was the original sentence that was translated, or if you don't like that. The hover, the pop up, you can disable. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So you're saying I could learn Portuguese too <laughs> at the same time no. I'm learning F sharp? <laughs> you could. <can>. How fantastic. <laughs> uh, you can also like re read in English. So it's like you, you, like sometimes when you're trying to find a topic, it will automatically bring it to whatever language your computer and browser is set up. So it's like I don't want to read it. Um, so you can read what was the source for that translation. 
Um, the one thing to, to kind of be conscious about is that this is the English version that was used to translate, but it takes a couple of weeks to get things translated, right? And to like, it goes to the translator and like, comes back. Uh, so if you really want the latest, then you should switch to English. So on the bottom, you can switch the language here, or I'm, I just type NUS because I'm used to it. And I know like the, oh, locale. the localized yeah, the code, yeah, locale so, code. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes like the English version uh, could be a little bit ahead. Um, so if you're like, if you're, does it pick up like your, the language of your OS or your browser and yeah, automatically browser, put you, okay, yeah, so, gotcha. So cool. whatever you have set up, um, but at least you have a quick way to, to, to read what was the source if it's like you want to see it. Um, and if you want to like, uh, like for example here, you can see that F sharp has a space here, so we'll edit that later. But you can see that the source was correctly, it doesn't have extra spaces in there. So you can see like whether it's like a source issue or a translation issue. Cool. So can uh, people make pull requests in their yes. native languages then? So yes. yeah. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Okay, cool. So they can they can either pull do pull requests against the English like if they find something that is wrong or they can do and help us improve the qu the quality of the translation. That's as well. fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. So how to get involved like the fun part. Yes. So every contribution matters. You found the typo. It, it matters to us. It's like it's important. We're improving the quality of our content. Uh, so this is like a snapshot from the last month of uh, of the .NET Docs repo, which is our conceptual docs. Um, we've reached like 806 contributors so far, uh, and last month we had like 300 merge pull requests. So wow, busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we get a lot of pull requests. So we had like 75 authors, considering that our team has like five writers. Yeah. Uh, for Don, like for Donet, for Donet core specifically and framework and C sharp, like the managed languages, that's huge, right? right? We get a lot of improvements uh, from other people on the team as well. Like, so we have PMs contributing and we have the community contributing, so. That's amazing. That's Real awesome. quick question, answer this question. What's the URL to try C Sharp in the browser? I think it's try.net, isn't it? Yeah, we, you have. Try.net? Yeah, so you have try.net. It's like, you can have the, the, the what powers our topic, so that's, Okay, that's, that's like just the unchromed version of, yeah. of it. So and that is the, the editor, basically. Yes, the editor. And then I, f I think we have an AKS link, but I'm, I'm not like reminding right now, but it's like C Donet. So you can go to, to Donet and you will be on the home page. So quick starts. Quick so starts. Yeah, okay, so go yeah, go to the home page of the docs, click on quick starts, guys. And yeah. there you and gotta have a guided quick start. So yeah. hello world numbers and that's what she's showing before. So. Yes, so cool. that, that's it. And I'll, I'll have it in the slide so you can download the slide as well. Cool. Um, and we love our community. So um, so we, as like we've done at Foundation, we have this partnership of like people that are really engaged in our, uh, in our repos, open source projects, we send a uh, little swag. So like, like people that are ha like making a huge contribution. And so docs is also being recognized as, as the same as a product. So like these are two of our contributors that got some of the swag uh, and offered this from Brazil. I um, mean, actually, you know, I, I would, I just want to make a comment here. Like I, I'm, I personally like, don't think I'm <laughs> at the same. level. I know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> awesome, yeah, dude! Woo! Um, yeah. So I, I personally don't think I'm, I'm capable of submitting code pull requests, say, into the .NET Core framework, right? Yeah. However, I'm pretty sure I could submit some pull requests to documentation, right? As yeah. a use, as a developer that uses the core, right? Um, so people need to understand, like you know, it's like every contribution. Is a, every every contribution is important, right? Even do, even if you don't think it's important, it is important. And making your first yeah. pull request can yeah. be very scary sometimes. Yeah. And so starting with documentation or testing is yeah. a really great way to get started with contributing to open source. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we encourage people that wanna 
like dive into this open source world that like if they want to get the experience docs is a great first step so um and also like contributions to docs for people that are interested in in being mvps or continuing to be mvps like the our program for most valuable professionals right um docs contributions are also counted as yeah. as part of that so yeah guys so like uh you know our our advocates are called mvps here there are you know there are best customer advocates and they help us in many many different ways and this is definitely one of them that's definitely recognized so that's really cool yeah super cool um we have a contributor guide so if you want to get started and want to learn like how it works we have it published on docs as well so we use everything in docs um and so let's get to like do a pull request yeah show me how this works okay so let me get i found one that had a, a typo here so i found this one that had a double t the the, the here so um so I, I just click edit and it takes you right to to the the source on github um so the, the UI for me will look a little bit different because I'm admin, so I can show another one where I have like, that you can do the same and that will look like what it looks for you. So I found another, the, in another topic. So you do the change, so you can just edit right here on the browser if it's a simple fix that you found. And I was like, remove double D. The, actually right and then I'll create a new branch so that's the part that looks a little bit different so you have to create a new branch and a, well, submit a pull it, request if yeah, you're outside yeah, yeah for contributors it's not even gonna show that option so yeah I'll, I'll show how it looks like in a second and right so I'll propose the file change and then we'll show me the the UI to open the, the actual pull request on github if you're fixing an issue and you can see the list of issues here on the second tab so if you're fixing an issue you can put the number here and so like it shows some of the ones that were yeah filed. so you hashtag the number you right? hashtag the yeah. number so that when it when it, we it merge, connects it. yeah it connects the two and then when you emerge it it, it automatically closed that right so cool i'll just create the pull request so that's one um I found, let's see if I have it here. Um, let me grab it from. I found another typo here and in a repo that I don't have the, that I don't have the permissions so that it looks oh, like. Oh, so it'll look like yeah, what we would see? Look, yeah. So this one, so you click the pencil as well for edit, so it's kind of consistent with what we have. And it also had a double the. Okay, and then here's where I said the um, there you go. UI yeah. is a little bit different when, when you have write permissions versus not. So remove double the, and then, but then the rest, it's all the same. Okay. So it creates, it creates a fork for you uh, and and a new branch, and then you can create the pull request. Cool. And then you wait for someone to moderate yeah. that and accept yeah, it. Yeah. So they will moderate and and review hopefully soon. So um, you said you're getting you get a lot of pull requests. How yes. long typically does it take to to review the pull request and get it in? We try to review it fast, but it's like there's a balance that we try to do be between incoming issues, yeah. incoming pull requests, and the work that we gotta do. Mm -hmm. um, so. We're trying to like we're still learning, uh, and trying to come up with what ways work fast. Okay, so um, be patient. Yeah, be patient. Like we will, but usually fast. Like within a day. Wow. Is what usually like the business day, right? Uh, it's usually like for simple fixes, and then like some more, um, maybe. More, more involved, yeah, more you involved have to try or maybe okay. like a new topic or something it might take a, a few more days. Because you have to test it yeah. or whatever. Sometimes okay. we drop the ball and we apologize, but um, yeah, we, we hopefully we try to stay on top, especially of pull requests. Uh, and and then for for uh, issues as well with triage, like we in triage individually also do triage meetings to go over some of the issues oh okay so we try to give a response um but if you don't like ping us and we'll try to answer um so that's kind of like the that's the flow the flow 
for like simple fixes. So I was like, you found a typo, found something wrong, and you just want to to show, or like to to make the change right away. Now you, there are sometimes people want to contribute, and the the, con the fix is a little bit more complex. Like it involves maybe more uh, more files or. Maybe it's like a sample in our .NET samples repository. And so you might want to use Visual Studio Code. So Right, okay, so maybe, like an editor. Yeah, okay. a real edi editor. So we have it, and we recommend it also because we're building extensions for Visual Studio Code. So we have the docs authoring pack for that. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you have some tools that can help with some of the, like the specialized markdown um, Syntaxes that we have. For yeah, docs. the little like TOC things that you need to put in, and the yeah, little like, like markers notes, or it's like yeah, notes. notes okay. and stuff like yeah. That. Okay. So you can get it with oh, the author cool. back. Oh, cool. So I can show it here. I prepare one uh, for the entity framework docs, uh, and we're trying to push it to use it more HTTPS links instead of HTTP to have secure, secure links. So I prepare like I have a a regular expression here that will change. Uh, some of the Microsoft links to HTTPS. So I ran the search before. I'll change all of them. Here's a good question. Is it better to submit an issue before attempting to tackle resolving it? Or do you um, hope some are just the instant pull requests for some simple changes like the for double For simple dot? changes, just go ahead and submit a pull request. It's easier for us. Okay. Uh, and for it's like less less work as well right. for you. Um, for if it's gonna be more involved, and um, then maybe an issue is, yeah, hey, here's a heads up. I want to yeah, totally change like, this article. Yeah, I want to okay. change that. Do you think it's worth it? Because we also don't want to lose your time and say no. It, like right. this is not what we would want to do, uh, or where we want to take this article. So take talk to us about. All right. So skull crusher for life. That was that was yours. <laughs> That's an awesome handle name. So you know, use your judgment. <laughs> All right. So. I'll say change links to HTTPS, um, and you can see here like what it just changed. Ah, okay. Just so that's the yes. So that's the I'll diff. Commit okay. And push it. So can you use the docs authoring tools in VS Code with the docs generated by DocFX? So as a solution for myself internally. Um, that's a good question. I don't good know question. Like, yeah, I would have to check. I you can we, you can use the you can use the the the, the authoring pack with any markdown. I just I don't know if DocFX recognize those notes. It might it might. So I'll double check and I'll I'll see. Hit my up time. on Twitter later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me up and I'll and I'll find it out. So okay. So then. We have ESP.NET entity. So here is my branch waiting for a pull request. So I'll just do that. You can put you can put more details if you want, um, and then maybe Diego will revive review it later, so you, you can see like what's the changes. Cool. And we try not like to do like. Like if it's something that it's like a bulk change, we try to kind of restrict the number of files because otherwise it takes us a long time as well to review if you do like, I see. I don't know, a thousand files. Oh, I gotcha. Um, like you're changing so, the yeah. whole table of contents. Unless you're <laughs> using some kind of script or a regular expression like that, that is like easy to kind of know what you're doing, then um, otherwise it makes it harder. All right, uh, so that, that was like complex fixes. And cool. then there are multiple ways to contribute. Like you can make fixes, updates, you can create, help us create content. Um, and then you can provide feedback on the content uh, as well as our issues. So it's like uh, some, some of our community members, they go and comment on the issues that are created even before we had a time to, to look at them. Cool. So, um, so you d contribution is really also 
created an issue too, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean a PR, yeah, so, yeah, right? Yeah, so providing feedback is like create an issue and we'll take a look. Yeah, so it's, it's very like, valuable. Yeah, it's very valuable. And then PR review, so some people will go and review our own work and make it better as well, so it's great. That's awesome. Um, and then if you want to help, we have uh, on the Donut Docs repos, we have up for grabs labels, so are things that we consider ah. that the community could help us out. Uh, and then on our own repo, we created a project for for do, for community help. So you have like um, task divided in kind of oh like a like Kanban a, board here, right? Yeah. So we have like maintenance kind of work, and then content updates kind of work, and then new content, uh, and then you can see what this looks, this looks super finished. organized. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> no, like seriously. <laughs> Yeah, and it's then awesome. people also like we organize uh, our sprints as well, all in the public. So you can see like our current sprint here, like what's to do, what's in progress, what was done, and who was like the person working on. So we even put like people's like from the community's faces so that like you recognize them. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so we can see who's doing what. Well, they're um, part of your team too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And so you can also reach out to our team on Twitter or email or whatever, like find us. Uh, and you can, like if you're interested in, in jumping on open source and you're not sure what to do, we have like very easy things that you, c you can start with and then we can build and progress um, from there. Here's and a good question. Can we help with migration and updating of docs that are not yet on, I'm assuming, the new system, I like F For the F-sharp core, I think they're working on it. So okay. uh, I don't think, like, I let's do the migration and then I think they can help out clean up and stuff. But so the I migration is from like an internal system, so it's kind of hard for people yeah. to do that piece. But once it's yeah, out, Yeah, I think we have then, tools okay. to help automate that, so it's like, much easier okay um, to just wait and then but it's coming I know it's coming because um, yeah we're all right dude so just I don't know be patient it's coming and then yeah then you can help update yeah. that so Philip would be the person that would know more about where that's at I'll go bug Philip <laughs> okay so any questions before I switch to Portuguese yeah, guys, so uh, Myra's going to give kind of a brief uh, recap in Portuguese. So uh, if you speak English like me and you have some questions, let's like go ahead and throw them up right now. Um, and then if you speak Portuguese, you can ask her in Portuguese. And she will read the questions because I will not be any help <laughs> whatsoever at that point. So, <laughs> all right, it looks like everybody okay. says thanks a lot. So why don't you go for it? Go. All right, okay. Um, então eu vou, eu não vou fazer é, a apresentação toda, então eu vou pular algumas partes e vou falar um pouco da parte de, de localização um, no Docs e mostrar um pouquinho. Então deixa eu voltar lá para meu browser. E se eu falar misturado em inglês e português, me desculpe, mas eu já, <risos> já moro muito tempo aqui. Um, então às vezes é inevitável. Um, então vocês têm aqui a homepage do Docs com, a, com os mesmos produtos que, que tem uh, para a versão em inglês. Ai, abriu em inglês, peraí. Eu tenho e, e aí você pode navegar. E aí o que eu estava falando antes, então os controles ficam aqui em cima, então você pode comentar e mandar comentários sobre sobre o conteúdo aí, e a tradução e pode entrar comentários sobre o produto então é, é nesse caso seria em inglês porque vai para o time para o time aqui na né, aqui em Redmond um, também pode dar comentários do site ou, ou então dar feedback anônimo então aqui se você colocar comentários sobre conteúdo vai para o GitHub um, aqui tem, a, você pode ver a tradução, então se você se desabilitar não tem mais os pop-ups e isso é meio, uh, meio chato assim de ficar lendo com o um negócio aparecendo em cima, mas se você quiser ver como é que era a sentença original em, em, em inglês, você pode ficar vendo assim se você quiser ajudar a arrumar a, a, a tradução e melhorar um pouco a qualidade. É, o conteúdo o conteúdo localizado ele ele tem dois tipos 
Então, a gente prioriza é, o, o conteúdo mais importante, ele, ele é traduzido por pessoas e aí tem, 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 tem alguns, tem alguns conteúdos, alguns artigos que vão ser traduzidos por máquina. Então, a qualidade de certos artigos da, da tradução vai ser pior, obviamente, quando é traduzido por máquina, mas aí, conforme a comunidade for uh, submetendo traduções, vai melhorando a, a qualidade da, 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 da machine translation, né, da, da tradução por máquina. É, eu separei aqui um... Um, um artigo que a gente poderia editar, onde eu achei um problema na tradução, onde F Sharp tem, tá com espaço aqui, não deveria, então dá para ver que em inglês tá, tá correto aqui, não tem esse espaço extra, então nós vamos uh, criar um pull request para o conteúdo em português. Então aqui, clica em editar aqui no, no lapisinho. E aí eu vou procurar por, pelos, pelos espaços. Então, aqui... Tem vários, então eu vou fazer alguns. E, e eu vou passar esse feedback para o time de, de localização também, para ver se, se eles conseguem é, arrumar esse problema de forma global, porque não sei por que está adicionando esses espaços. Ah. Vamos ter quase lá. E quando, quando você criar, você pode tanto falar em inglês ou português, que a pessoa que, que vai estar tá revisando, uh, tem um time de localização que vai estar tá revisando e eles falam tanto... A, a língua mãe quanto quanto inglês então tanto faz um, só so remove extra spaces and create a new branch então tá então aqui tá o pull request vou submeter e e aí alguém então é um é um repo pro é um repositório pro conteúdo em português e e aí você pode ver aqui que eles eles revisam e, e, e classificam o tipo de, de, de problema, se é, uma, se é linguística, se é, se é um problema na fonte. Então, quando tiver problemas com o um artigo, que ele, eles, eles vão identificar se o problema é na tradução ou se o problema também existe em inglês. Então, se, se por exemplo, o código geralmente é um problema que vai estar tá no conteúdo em inglês. Então, vocês podem submeter... O, o pull request direto para o docs e não para a tradução. Mas também se, não, se vocês não souberem, também é, não tem problema, porque vai é, a, o time analisa e aí eles, eles criam um pull request para nós se o problema está na, na, na fonte em inglês e não no, na tradução. Um, e aí eu queria mostrar também aqui... Eu falei um pouco da jornada que a gente teve de criar os docs e, e, e de lançar, lançar um, o docs da Microsoft.com, do MSDN e do TechNet. É, um pouco da visão que a gente tinha para o docs de, de ir onde a comunidade estava. Então, a gente adotou o GitHub para colocar... É, a, o, os arquivos, né, o conteúdo, é, a gente adotou o Markdown como, como um formato padrão que já era estabelecido na indústria, é, a gente queria uma forma de, de poder receber os comentários e reagir a eles e não só aquela caixa preta que a gente tinha antes, né, tipo, onde os comentários iam e você não sabia se ia ser endereçado ou não. É, Todos os pull requests, eles estão em automação e validação, então para quem nunca submeteu e tem medo de quebrar alguma coisa, tem medo de, de, de fazer alguma coisa errada, não se preocupem, que tem automação, a gente vai validar, a gente vai revisar, então pode submeter e a gente vai fornecer o feedback. E a gente queria o URLs amigáveis, então 
o, o conteúdo, as URLs vão ser em inglês, então, mas você pode tentar meio que adivinhar, então, por exemplo, se você está navegando no, no, no Docs, nas APIs, And I just remind, I, I mean, I remember I forgot to show the API browser or something. Like, oh, yeah, that one's yeah, cool. I'll show yeah. that one. Um, mas se você está navegando nas APIs e, por exemplo, você quer ir para System String, é, você pode, você meio que pode tentar adivinhar o nome da classe. And just, I'll just switch to English just a little bit because I forgot to talk about the API browser before. So that's another cool thing. I, so we launched uh, in 2017. Uh, and you can choose like what is your target or so if you're looking at Donna core to one you can see like what APIs are part of that set and you can search for so you want like span of T for example um, so you can search for it and we'll take you and right now because we are like we just migrated um, the content from MSDN to Docs and we did the redirection, um, Google is still indexing the content. Um, so I think the API browser at this moment is kind of like our your best place to search for things. So you can search for string and it will show you like the classes and methods. Um, or you can go back to the API browser if you're not finding so like a like string format. So that's um, how it works. Então, uh, e para a gente acabou de lançar as APIs localizadas então se você for aqui eu vou trocar para português e vou para daytime então um, aqui tem o conteúdo todo localizado também é, e, e aqui também tem a, a experiência interativa de executar no browser. Então, pode rodar o, o, o código aqui na, na versão em português também. Não um, a gente lançou o Docs, então, em 2016. 2017, a gente lançou esse API Browser para você fazer a busca de APIs. Os tutoriais interativos usando o try.net é, e os quick starts. Então, deixa eu mostrar aqui uh, em C Sharp. Então, tem aqui os, os guias de início rápido, que são os, os quick starts. Então, você pode entrar aqui e seguir as lições e, e também é localizada. E, então, você pode usar aqui Hello World e... Não, sei, Hello Brazil. Um, e aí a gente adotou, os comentários mudaram do Lightfire, que era a nossa antiga plataforma para comentários, para o GitHub Issues. E, e, e sem, essa semana a gente está a gente tá trocando, a, a gente está redirecionando as APIs da MSN de, do .NET é, para as versões localizadas. Então, se, se ainda não aconteceu, vai acontecer em breve... Ah, o switch e, e aí vai, vocês vão começar a receber só as URLs em, no Docs. É, existem algumas ferramentas que vocês podem usar para gerar a documentação, então se vocês quiserem é, usar para gerar documentação interna no, no, no produto de vocês, ou se quiserem gerar documentação externa, tem o DocFX, tem o um link ali que depois vocês vão ter acesso às apresentações. E o MDoc é a, a ferramenta que a gente usa que reflete é, em cima dos assemblies ou dos, dos pacotes NuGet para gerar é, a, 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 a documentação das APIs para a gente. Então, uh, algumas partes do, do, que, faz, que geram o site do Docs da Microsoft da Comissão 
são software livre e algumas são proprietárias internas que a gente não tem como distribuir. É, já fiz o tour, então já comentei sobre os tipos de comentários. Os guias interativos também, além do, 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 do Quick Start, do, dos guias de início rápido que, que tem para o C Sharp, tem também Azure Cloud Shell e também as APIs de REST, é, que vocês também podem testar, é bem legal o Azure Cloud Shell. Um, se quiser ser notificado de atualizações, tem, um, você pode usar o RSS Feed da, das pesquisas, então quando você faz uma busca no Docs, você consegue uh, buscar, ou tem essa ferramenta do Flow, e você pode procurar pro, pelo template da, do Docs, para que te manda e-mail para ele ele fica é, ele fica é, ele checa diariamente ou na, na frequência que você determinar se o documento foi atualizado e te manda um e-mail quando isso acontece então se tem algum algum artigo que te interessa muito saber quando é atualizado você pode criar esse flow é, a gente criou um arquivo docs então pode navegar para docs.microsoft.com Agora, é, estou acostumada a falar em inglês, docs.microsoft.com uh, barra pt dash, uh, traço br uh, barra previous, uh, previous versions. Então, é difícil de falar. <laughs> It's hard to say the URL in Portuguese. <laughs> ok, so, então, assim, a gente agradece muito... É, a, a contribuição de todos aqui é um, é um pouquinho do que aconteceu no, mês, no último mês é, no nosso repositório do conteúdo em inglês, que é onde o meu time trabalha e aqui é, tem alguns membros da comunidade que receberam alguns dos alguns presentes, algumas lembrancinhas nossas por ter participado da, por ter contribuído bastante para o nosso repositório o Alfred é do Brasil, por exemplo, então é, não precisa ser só gente dos Estados Unidos. E, e se quiser saber mais como contribuir, está aí o site uh, docs.microsoft.com uh, barra contribute. E, então já mostrei como fazer as edições rápidas no GitHub. É, Para quem quiser fazer edições mais complexas, é, usa o Visual Studio Code com o Docs Authoring Pack, e, que é uma extensão, e tem várias formas de contribuir. Então, é, a gente espera aí o teu pull request, e, e quem quiser ajudar na, 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 no conteúdo em inglês, tem, tem, a gente usa alguns rótulos no nosso repositório, e tem um projeto também para quem quiser ajudar. A gente teve alguns brasileiros que, que ajudaram. E pode entrar em contato com o nosso time se quiser achar alguma coisa também, se quiser encontrar. Mas se estiver navegando e achar alguma coisa estranha, que nem aquele F Sharp que eu achei, é, é só criar um pull request e a gente aprecia muito. Então, tá? É isso aí. Awesome. Ah, alguma pergunta? Is there any? I didn't see any Portuguese questions. There was a question I scrolled by, though, that maybe we want to answer in English. It was in English. Um, there was a question, and I had a question, too, about the same thing. Um, how do you keep track of links inside of the docs? Like, if you want to link to another doc in your pull request, is there a special way to link it, or you just do the full? I'm assuming it's not the full so, URL. Uh, so, yeah. That's uh, something that uh, we we don't use the full link. We kind of use like a without the HTTP as Docs Microsoft because then it will also work for our offline books. Right. Okay. Because then it's like for for Visual Studio, uh, there are some products that we have. So is it a, is it a relative link? Yeah. Then? So it's kind of a re site relative. It's site rel relative. Rel okay. Site relative link. Uh, and then if it's something that exists inside the repo, then we use a, like a true relative link. Like, okay. Because then the build can validate. Is that in uh, the documentation for submissions and yeah, contribution yeah, guide? Be. If okay. it's not, it should, yeah, we should put okay. it. Um, and cool. then uh, API links have a special format that we, uh, d we definitely have documentation on how to create those. Um, so looks like we got some more questions here in English. Uh, I really love how Microsoft gives the ability to easily talk to the core MS team in live sessions that explain the tech. Do you see any 
that in any other enterprises? I don't know. Maybe this is a question to the audience. It really makes my day to see Myra, the one who helped me a lot to understand the tech here, live on my laptop, live on my laptop. Wish you an easy life as you always Aww. make fine Myra. Aww. Wow. That sounds like a love letter there. <laughs> That's fantastic. You guys have been awesome. I was just saying, um, so cool <laughs> to have the, the Brazilian community here. Yeah, I actually saw a few uh, people saying, like, great job on, on both languages. Yeah. Very, very yeah, inclusive. Yeah, I, I didn't one. know how I would do that. Like, like, <laughs> so I kind of uh, could fumble. <laughs> um, I, 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 you went perfect in my eyes. I, okay, I, that great. was awesome. So um, any more questions out there, guys? Um, in such a huge documentation, how do you know what links were? Okay, so I think we had just addressed that. Um, do you have any way to keep track of preserving incoming links? A lot of forums, including Microsoft discussions, answer problems that provide links yeah. to MS Docs that over time expire. Yeah, so we, we have redirections in place. So uh, like hopefully people are applying them so that you will never get uh, a dead link. Okay, um, so there's a redirection service yeah, like yes, in MSDN yeah. that goes, okay. Yeah, so. and even like on the repo, you can set up the redirection right there, so. Okay, yeah. awesome, it's a great, file, so. awesome. All right, guys, uh, yeah, well, thank Myra, you. I just want to say thank you so much, Yay, all your great you. work, <laughs> and I think that was a fantastic, uh, fun. fantastic session. So yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. All right, so uh, we'll be right back.